Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my Goblin Guide. Now, <laughs> what you might be thinking is, but Jim, you don't know anything about goblins. Well, I know somebody who does. And Yudlagar is absolutely incredible at goblins, he streams. My advice for people is always watch Yudlagar. Um, I will link his Twitch in the description. I've spoken to him a bit and you know, I know a little bit about goblins. So uh, let's have a look at all the players on the team first of all. So you've got the trolls now. Trolls are okay. They're okay players. 115,000, 4, 5, 5 plus, 10 plus. You know, kind of standard big guy in a way, like a, a little bit on the slow side. Um, really stupid. It's kind of annoying, you need a babysitter for them. They are trained trolls, they get a 3 plus loner, which is quite good. Regen, so they're harder to die. Harder to die, harder to kill. <laughs> Always hungry means when they throw the goblins, they sometimes eat them. That's, you know, and throw a teammate less than throw, throw goblins. They've got mighty blow, great. Um, you know, they're good at punching things okay at getting hit unfortunately they take too many hits because you know they're your only player on your team you want getting hit so they tend to take a lot of hits but if they can make a few hits with mighty blow they can get lucky and they can projectile vomit so this is interesting i've i've played a bit of orcs and i've used vomit a few times it's quite good that it can't cause a turnover and what's bad about it is you're one in six to maybe hurt yourself instead of like 1 in 27 to maybe hurt yourself however it's not knocking you down unless it breaks your armor and it's not causing a turnover ever so there are times to projectile vomit but most of the time you're not going to want to it's mostly versus like block and dodge players and stuff that you'll, you'll do it or you know if uh, if getting knocked over is terrible as far as the skills go, of course the main one they want is block. They don't mind a pro either. So block and pro are two of the skills. You could random these if you're going to play the team forever. Because, you know, rookies are always good, right? Goblins want to keep their TV low, as low as they can. Not so much because they make amazing use of inducements, though they do get bribes for 50k each because of uh, bribery and corruption special rule. But... They're just, they're just not that good at high TV, right? They don't want to face people with lots of guard, lots of block, lots of mighty blow, lots of tackle. So they want to keep it as low as they can. One of the other things you can do is you can take a leader reroll on him. This is pretty good, even for 40 TV, because it's, you know, a reroll would be 60 TV, so it's saving a bit of a bit of TV by taking a leader. You can do that. And of course you can take guard. Guard is great, stand firm is great. Um, but due to the nature of goblins, you probably just want to go block and uh, depending on how much you're going to play the team, maybe just select it, save up those 12 SPP and select block. Probably good advice. Then you've got the Pogoer. This is your number one ball carrier with actually a big disadvantage. He's got Stunty and Dodge, which is great, but he does not have right stuff, so you can't throw him at all. He's got pogo stick, which means he can he can jump very well. Of course, he doesn't really need to jump much because he's got stunty. But uh, you know, the pogo stick's okay. It's actually okay. Um, and he's movement seven, edge three plus, strength two, AV eight plus. So he's basically like a standard goblin, but with plus movement. Now he's pretty he's pretty expensive, but the thing is this movement is faster than you can ever get otherwise. So he's a good addition eventually, but he's not he's not a standard. Like you know, he's 35 TV. If if you're including him, you want levels on him, basically. Or you're using him in like a tournament, NAF style tournament, and you've got the money to pay for him, but he's an interesting piece he you know he is going to be 
if you skill him up, you know, you want sure hands and block on him. Those those are your two big general skills. Agility wise, sidestep. And you want plus movement on him and plus agility. They are the key ones. Agility two plus so he can go anywhere he wants. And movement nine. So so basically the more value out that you get out of him is when he gets more and more skills on him. If you're not going to put skills on him, you probably don't want him. And uh, you know you can use him on tabletop for like sure hands or something as a ball carrier, but he's really just not much better than a normal goblin. That's the thing. It, you know he's not worth it, right? 75k versus 40k for basically just plus movement. The, the, the pole go he can use sometimes, but you you can't really plan on it. I don't know really plan it, it's just it's just not going to be necessary most of the time. Now, this player is a great player. So a normal a normal goblin is 40k, this guy's 65k. He's even worse at passing than the pole goer. But this is a this is a great model, isn't it? Um he's got dodge right stuff stunty like a normal goblin. And then for 25k extra, he's got dirty player, normally. A secondary skill he's got it for only 25k and he's, he's got disturbing presence as well you know that's really really low impact that's maybe worth 5k but he's basically got dirty player for 20k which is just incredible and of course what he wants to do is you want to carry on this guy you want to score your first two touchdowns with him get him sneaky git and then he's finished and then you've got sneaky git dirty player the best combination in the game you can get it really quick Quicker than any other team, absolutely. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's the best fowler in the game. He's probably the best player in the game. <laughs> that's, that's how good sneaky get dirty player is. So yeah, this this guy is absolutely fantastic. If you're forced to take more levels on him, just uh, save up and give him plus AV because you know he he will get targeted if your opponent can target him and this is the cheapest advancement to give him in addition to sneaky git you could also i mean no you couldn't really random him could you because you've only got one and he has to have sneaky git and then we've got the loony the loony has got secret weapon so you only get to use this player for one drive unless you have bribes or you argue the call this is the theme of goblins having these cool secret weapons that are fun He's got Stunty, which lets him dodge um, always on a 3+. plus. However, because he's got Chainsaw, that doesn't work. Th this does make him more easy to injure like all the other goblins. Stat line is Normal Goblin. His cost is a Normal Goblin. But he's got Chainsaw. Um, when he hits somebody or fouls somebody, you can choose to use the Chainsaw. On a 1, he, he hits himself, which is, which is pretty terrible. But on all the other results... It's 2d6 plus 3 to break their AV. So this is like a really good way of getting rid of blodgers, getting rid of big guys, stuff like that. It's it's re it's essential. It's versatile. You can use them on offense and defense. And uh, yeah, it's you know it's something you never enjoy facing when you're playing against goblins. It can it can kill you very well. Leveling him up, not a lot you want to take. You can get dodge on normals. You could also get sidestep, I guess. You know, maybe you would just random this guy. Maybe you'd give him. Do I mean, dodge is a bit of protection, isn't it? I think. I think that's probably reasonable to just take dodge. But um, yeah, a good player. Good player. You pretty much always want a loony on your team. And another player you pretty much always want on your team is the fanatic. So again, he's got stunty just for the injuring. He actually doesn't need to move at all. <laughs> He's got sure. He's got no hands. <laughs> Not sure. He's got no hands, so he can never get the ball because his hands are full. He's got a secret weapon, so again, sent off after one drive. And he's very expensive, 70k for a goblin. Only movement three, but that's because he's strength seven. <laughs> and the ball and chain is is kind of crazy, right? He doesn't move like a normal player. He doesn't block like a normal player. He just doesn't act like a normal player. You use the throwing template to move him at random. So, if your opponent doesn't know what they're doing, or, you know, something, they can just have a tight LOS, and then this guy will just hit guaranteed. It's actually pretty good. He'll, he will hit every time. He's going to try and hit every time he moves into somebody. 
and he's going to try and like you know he, he hits prone players he doesn't foul them he just hits them while on the ground and hits their armor so he's actually he's actually pretty great you, what you want to do is not be not be brave with him right you want to keep him keep him protected as much as possible because even if your opponent can uphill him and you know so two dice your pick like just put in an assist somehow there's a very good chance with block that that he will be put down and and certainly with block and tackle is you know really bad so yeah he, he, you really have to protect him but again it's another great way for goblins to get ahead you, you really do kind of have to use him he can take mighty blow on primary which is obviously great mighty blow and things is good he's strength seven he's hitting things on the ground he's three dicing things He's great. Oh yeah, he always hits whether it's like friend or foe. So you want to, you've really got to think about how you're aiming him. He can of course take block. Block is great. And uh, as far as characteristics go, plus movement is incredible, right? Because he's only moving three. You want him moving up to four or five if you can. Um, but again, TV is a is an issue with him. But you know he can do things. Mighty blow, block, movement, or the three good things for a fanatic now the doom diver the sad sad little doom diver he's 20k on top of a normal goblin he looks great i mean this is this is fantastic and for four years from 2016 to 2020 on tabletop this guy was absolutely incredible but unfortunately nowadays he's not he doesn't have dodge and this swoop has been nerfed so unfortunately the doom diver is purely a for fun option and uh, if you're a serious goblin coach you will not take the doom diver pretty sad also you're very unlikely to take the bomber now that's not because the bomber is bad 45k pretty much standard goblin secret weapon dodge stunty again can't can't dodge well but um yeah this is the thing he's got bombardier you can throw bombs it's really nice it throws it like a pass and they explode and uh you know your opponents can catch them intercept them stuff like this but yeah on a four plus it's knocking players over so it's really good it's actually really good, the Bombardier. But the reason that he is not so good is Bomber Dribble Snot exists. So you'd rather not have him in Induced Bomber Dribble Snot most of the time. But there are times you'll have him in, like, you know, tabletop tournaments and stuff because Bomber Dribble Snot is usually banned. And then maybe I should have started with a Goblin, but there you go. This is your standard Goblin. 6, 2, 3, plus 4, plus 8, plus 40k. Dodge, stunty, right stuff. And stunty means that he can dodge really well. 3 plus, go anywhere, do anything. But also he gets injured more easily, uh, which is a little bit sad. But, um, you know, really good players. You can throw them, they dodge around, lend assists, take up space. Pretty nice. So this is the recommended starting team from Yudlagar. We've got two trolls, you can only allow two. We've got the Uligan, again, get him sneaky get as soon as possible. This is your absolute prime objective is to score on the Uligan. The Looney, because it's great. Fanatic, because it's great. 15 players, because players will die. Only two rerolls. Kind of would like to get to three rerolls if possible, but you need to be able to get bribes, right? Bribes really help keep your players on the pitch. And you can set on Blood Bowl 3 looking for higher TV, so you know, maybe just plus 100. You don't want to go too high because, again, other teams get mighty blow and block and tackle and kill your goblins very effectively. And, you know, with guard, they can freeze out the trolls as well. Now eventually what you can do is you can build B 
big goblins if you want. Now these are very big goblins, 1340. They could have even had a third reroll to go to 1400. This isn't very advisable, but you know, people people like to do it. So this, if you want to do it, this is what you can do. Block number one skill on the trolls. If you play them forever, you random this block. Otherwise, you pick it. Pogoer here. You know, this is the ultimate pogo, right? Blocks your hand sidestep. Movement nine, agility two plus, like an incredible ball carrier, basically like a super gutter runner. Like what an amazing, what an amazing player to have. So you know that there's there's a reason to have this player. That's unbelievable. ulligan has got a sneaky git. Looney's got dodge, bit of protection. Fanatic's got the three things he wants: block, mighty blow, movement. The the goblin lineman could just like random. Oh, I totally forgot about the advancements for the goblin lineman, didn't I? <laughs> um, so they don't get a lot of value, unfortunately. Goblin lineman don't get a lot of value, and um, their only primary is agility. So you could random agility, you know, might get a sidestep, sneaky git. There you two decent ones, right? Two out of eleven, not bad. Sack everything that isn't those on a double. That's one way of doing it. The other way is a general. And you can random, you can get block, you can get wrestle. Strip ball isn't horrendous, right? Because they can dodge anywhere and get into a cage on a three plus. They can, you can have a kick, you can have a dirty player. So you're getting quite a lot of value off just like taking a random general. You know, it's not terrible, but again, goblins aren't aren't great players. So you're not getting that much value from them. But you know, this is, ends up with a pretty expensive team. So again, you can use this this ability to try and get a bribe or two, but the problem is, you know, you're going to spin into high TVs teams that are going to be more equipped to deal with goblins. Um, but will they be able to deal with this pogo? Maybe not. And uh, another qualification of Yudlagar is he does he uses goblins on tabletop, NAF style tabletop, at the UKTC. He was on a team with Elliot, Dimmy G, and Hancock, and he was the best player. <laughs> with goblins <laughs> so that's pretty incredible isn't it and this is what he's taken to the European at Euro Bowl making use of the extra skill pack and we're going three block players all the good players have got block and then he's got a sure hands pole goer a dirty player lineman and a strip ball lineman so using doubles well not doubles uh, secondaries on the goblins and in fact, secondaries on these as well. He said if there was like, you know, less se secondaries available, he'd go primaries on the trolls to get like, you know, guard to use his primaries, guard on the trolls, mighty blow on the fanatic to use a primary, dodge on the loony to use a primary, and uh, of course, sneaky git on the ooligan. The ooligan just didn't work out for pricing right for this. This was, this was what he needed to uh, fit the pricing, three rerolls and three bribes. So, you know, loads of players to absorb losses and bribes and uh, yeah, this is it. I mean, he's the expert. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be doing a run with goblins. So, you know, hopefully I'll get better. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm gonna give them a go. I'm gonna give halflings and goblins a go. Uh, there is, of course, the matter of goblin star players. Okay, so here we are at the inducement screen for goblins. You can see 50k bribes is incredible, three is the maximum, so that's, you know, you're probably going to load up on bribes every chance you get. They're not as critical, I don't think, um, for goblins as, you know, the chef is for halflings, but, you know, still, they're pretty decent, right? Um, so getting a few of them is usually pretty good. Coaches you only take if you have to, because you've got spare left over, never cheerleaders. Chef's too expensive for anybody but halflings. Apple's not worth it. Don't even take an apple. I forgot to mention that. Actually, never take an apple, right? There's nothing worth using the apothecary on. Ref bias referee's pretty decent. You can take that. That's only 80. So, you know, you can combine that with, you know, if you have got 130, you can have a bribe and a ref, something like that. Kegs, again, if you've got more inducements and you can't spend more on stars, you could do that. Training, not really going to be worth it. Wizard can be worth it. Situational, got to use your, got to use your brain on that one. So then we've got the star players. Now, the most, firstly, the most important is Bomber Dribble Snot. He is 
the king of goblins and pretty much any team he can play for. 50k only and he's got 3 plus PA and he's got accurate and his special ability is once per game normally if you catch the, a bomb on a 1, 2 or 3 it explodes in your hand on a 4 plus you can like throw it back or something. With this he can just make it explode instantly so it's a very good once per game special ability. 50k is very cheap. And he's just incredible, and like you know, he actually just invalidates the bomber position for goblins because you're just better off inducing this guy. He is really, really good. Ripper is decent. The problem that Ripper has is a is a, he's not stupid, right? He hasn't got really stupid. And uh, the problem that he has is he's not Varagulchur. Slow, very strong, but he doesn't have block. He's got grab. And he can reroll single dice per half, so you know he's got the same kind of ability as Griff and Puggy. But the problem is he's not Varag, and uh, he's 250. And where is Varag? Varag's 280. Varag is like way better, right? He's got block, he's got Night and Blow, and same as Ripper. He's got Thick Skull, he's got Jump Up, he's Armor 9 Plus, he's Strength 5, but he's Movement 6. Edge 3 plus, he can just do everything right. And his special ability is like super mighty blow. So he's really great. Like one per game, he gets basically gets mighty blow plus two once a game, right? Which to be fair, it's not gonna it wouldn't affect it doesn't affect that many rolls. So it's just great having it when you need it. So yeah, it's uh Varag's really good. But again, he's like very expensive, right? It's the same for like making a Making a roster for NAF events, you know, if you if you get the uh, the ability to induce a star, then Varag can be one of those. But you know, it depends how much you've got to give up to get him, basically. Um, so yeah, Fungus the Loon, he's okay, right? 80k for a mighty blow, movement four, fanatic, basically again better than the normal fanatic, <laughs> um, quite a lot better actually because he gets to re-roll the direction every single activation so yeah he's actually great in fact <laughs> he's really great isn't he yeah maybe underrated fungus the loon um so yeah you know maybe you could get both of these guys a fair amount of the time perhaps uh gobbler grimlich is pretty rubbish 230 he's got a bunch of skills you don't really want or care about and his his ability isn't great so yeah i mean you can take him but for 230k it's not very good I mean, bless him i mean the good thing is he's got a good leap now right that his ability does mean that his leap is good he's gonna basically have a one plus leap which is pretty nice isn't it once right, it's not one plus it's like minus one plus so he's probably gonna get it down to a two um once again but yeah he's just got a bunch of skills that are a bit not great shall we say black gobbo is kind of cool but the thing is he's just so expensive right 225 is ridiculously expensive but he's, he's, he is kind of cool right he's got stab he's got sneaky git he's got sidestep he's got dodge he's got disturbing presence he's got a bomb so like he does everything right he's like a hooligan and he's like a stabber and he's like a bomber he's like he is he is pretty cool and uh, he, he can make an extra foul and he's got sneaky git for it so like he really is the ultimate goblin but ultimately that's it you know it's just not really what you need um this is another great star for naf style hacklem scuttle spike obviously a bit cheaper than varag he's basically a plus strength edge one plus gutter runner which is pretty flipping good. <laughs> he's also got a tail, but uh, he's got extra arms and two heads, which essentially makes him add one plus. And his ability means he just knocks down somebody and gets the ball off him. So what's this? What this means is, you know, he can accept a handoff in like you know three tackle zones or whatever, and just get it. So, and he don't. It doesn't have to be a handover as well, right? You you just move somebody up to him, and then he takes it off them. So it's like, it's a pretty great ability, honestly. Really great ability. And, you know, he's a plus strength good runner. So 
yeah, and Azure One Plus, he's a really, really great star. So yeah, he's a, he's always going to be a great choice to pick. Uh, Helmet Wolf is not great. He's got the old probability, which is nice, rerolling armor and injury, but you know he's expensive and he's got a saw. That's just not really good. What you want? Creek Rust Gouger is new to Blood Bowl Three in the new update because you know ball and chain has become a thing. He's movement five, which is kind of crazy, right? Strength seven, of course. Mighty blow. He's got a tail because he's like a rat ogre. So this is decent. Also, he comes with a bribe. I'll be back. I mean, amazing. He's he calls himself the Verminator, and uh, so yeah, so he basically gets a free bribe, right? That always works. But at 170 TV is actually pretty expensive. But he's so fast, it could be worth it. Um, I, I, mean, I guess, and also it means you could have three fana fanatics essentially, right? Because you could have Fungus and Creek and your fanatic. But I basically think Fungus is better because of the rerolling, right? The rerolling ability is pretty cool. Madcap Migs is a player I have no experience of. He was out in 2016, which I didn't really play. He's got his ability is a really good leap. Movement six, strength four, leap. <laughs> And he's got claws. I don't think he's good, unfortunately. Oh god, and Channel Fury. Okay, no, he's. I'd go so far as to say he's absolutely terrible. <laughs> and uh, of course, Morgan Thorg is great. Uh, Mighty Blow plus two can throw goblins really well. Gold standard in star players. You don't really want to be down enough TV to be using him, though. That's the only bad thing about him. So there you go. Hopefully this has got some ideas going and yeah, I'll be doing the the series with goblins and a series with halflings, so that's gonna be fun, isn't it? <laughs> um this will be testing my newfound optimism maybe. But you know, you can't expect to win too many games with goblins or halflings, but you know, lots of people find them fun and uh I'll do my best to have, you know, some kind of room with them. So thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.